Hello and welcome back to this video series about manifolds. And in today's part 13 we will talk about examples for the smooth manifolds we have discussed in the last video. However, before we do that, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter you have access to quizzes and the PDF versions for all the videos. Now, at the start of this video, I can tell you that we have already seen a lot of examples for smooth manifolds. The first example here will be the n-dimensional sphere. Which is, as you know, by definition a subset of Rn plus 1. In fact, this will be now a smooth manifold defined by the atlas we have discussed in part 10. Therefore, the first step here should be that we show that this atlas is indeed a C-infinity atlas. For this, please recall that we had charts given by the sets Ui plus minus and the maps Hi plus minus. In fact, this was not so complicated, it was just about taking hemispheres and then the projections. In this sense, it's best to visualize this with the two-dimensional sphere in R3. For example, the southern hemisphere here is given by u3 minus. And then the corresponding map h will just get rid of the third coordinate here. Or more generally, the map hi plus minus will map a given vector with n plus 1 components to a vector with only n components. More precisely, the trick is that we omit the ith component. This means that we go to xi minus 1 and then comes xi plus 1. So this is what you already know, this is what the chart should do. More precisely, for our sphere S2 in the space, this means that the whole hemisphere is mapped to a disk. Okay, so this is what we already know, but now please recall, if we want to talk about smooth manifolds, we need to talk about the transition maps. In other words, now we have to take two charts. And maybe let's stay with the visualization in R3. So now what we do is that we take one set ui plus and another one uj plus. And then we are interested in the overlap in the intersection of both sets. And now, for example, we could imagine that ui plus is the northern hemisphere, which means u3 plus. On the other hand, the other set could be u1 plus. And then you should see this intersection here is this upper quarter of the sphere. However, now please don't forget, we are interested in the transition maps. Or to say it in other words, we have to look what happens here at the pink level. Therefore, we have to apply the maps hi plus and hj plus. Now you should see, in R3, both map the corresponding hemisphere to a disk. However, now the question is, what happens to our intersection here? For example, here on the left hand side, for hi plus, we immediately see that this quarter sphere is mapped to this half disk. On the other hand, for h1 plus, of course, half a hemisphere should also be mapped to half a disk. And if you look at the map, it turns out this is the corresponding set. Okay, and now please recall, the transition map we are interested in is the map that sends this half disk to this half disk. And usually we call such a transition map omega. It's the map from left to right, which means first we apply hi plus inverse and then hj plus. So we have this composition of the two maps restricted on that domain. And now I think it's helpful to calculate this map for the example we have sketched here. In other words, n is equal to 2, i is equal to 3 and j is equal to 1. Now, in a very concrete way, we know what these two maps here do. Now, in order to understand this, let's go step by step. First, we start with a two-dimensional vector, let's call it x prime. 
So this is an element here on the left hand side and in our case it has two components. We have x1 prime and x2 prime. Okay, and now we apply the first map here, which means we go back to R3. In other words, now we have a vector with three components. And now you should know from the other parts that we can form this additional component with a square root. More precisely, it's the square root of 1 minus the Euclidean norm of x prime squared. So this is how the inverse of h works. Okay, and then in the next step we apply the map h on the other side. Or more concretely, this is now hj that goes from r3 into r2. And there you should recall what we have discussed before, hj omits the jth component. Hence, in this case, we get rid of this component here in the first line. And of course, as it should be, we get back a vector with two components. Now, the first component here is x2 prime. And the other one is the square root here. Okay, and there you should see, going from this vector here on the left hand side to the vector here on the right hand side is exactly the action of our map omega. And there we can answer the question, is the transition map omega a diffeomorphism? There I don't need to go into the details because you should see differentiability is no problem for this map on this open domain. And in the same way we can also show that the inverse of omega is differentiable as well. In fact we can form the derivatives of any order. Which implies that we have a C infinity diffeomorphism. Of course, this is a very important conclusion here and you should see this works no matter which dimension we choose and which combination of i and j we choose. Or to put it in other words, all transition maps omega are C infinity diffeomorphisms. So what we have is a C infinity atlas. Therefore, the only thing that is left to do is to extend this C infinity atlas to a maximal C infinity atlas. And then, by definition, we have a C-infinity smooth manifold. And with this, we have seen our first example of a smooth manifold and this was also not so trivial. For this reason, I would say, let's also look at simpler examples. So, in this next example, we can simply say that Rn is a smooth manifold. And of course, here it's not hard at all to find immediately an atlas for this manifold. In fact, we only need one chart consisting of the whole manifold Rn and the map H can be the identity map. And then as before, this atlas can be extended to a maximal C infinity atlas. And there you should see, just by starting with one chart, we immediately get a whole C infinity smooth structure for this manifold. In fact, this is what we call the standard smooth structure for Rn. Of course, there could be also other smooth structures for Rn, but usually when we say that Rn is a smooth manifold, we mean this standard smooth structure for Rn. Actually, this will be important in the next video when we talk about submanifolds of Rn. Moreover, the next example now already goes in this direction. More precisely, here we consider a continuously differentiable function f. So we say f is an element of C1 of R. And then you should know we can visualize this function as a graph in the plane. So for example, it could look like this. And there you should know, as a set we can write this as a collection of pairs. So the first coordinate is the point x and the second the value f of x. And there x should go through the whole domain, so in this case x is an element of R. In other words, gf is a subset in R times R. Indeed, all the information of the function is contained in this subset gf. Moreover, maybe you remember, if you do set theory, we use the graph to define the concept of a function. Therefore, you should see, this whole thing here is a natural concept. 
However, here in our case, we should recognize that we have indeed a manifold. More precisely, we can say GF is a one-dimensional manifold. You see this immediately because we also only need one chart. More concretely, this would be H from GF to R by simply sending this pair X F of X to the point X. Indeed, here you should immediately see the well-defined inverse of H. And now as before, you know this is what we can extend to a smooth structure. And then, in this sense, the graph GF is a smooth manifold. However, here you should see this smooth manifold is embedded in another smooth manifold. Namely, inside R2 with the standard smooth structure. And in fact, this connection is what we call submanifolds. Hence, I really hope that we meet there. Have a nice day and bye.